Good morning and welcome to the Longbow Energy PLC Investor Presentation. Throughout this recorded presentation, investors will be in listen-only mode. Questions are encouraged and can be submitted at any time via the Q&A tab situated on the top right-hand corner of your screen. Simply type in your questions at any time and press send. The company may not be in a position to answer every question it receives during the meeting itself. However, the company will review all questions submitted today and publish responses where it is appropriate to do so. Before we begin, I'd like to submit the following poll. And I'd now like to hand over to Helga Hammer, CEO from Longbow Energy. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, everyone. Um, looking forward to present to you our um, latest well result, our feature discovery this morning. I'm joined by Hilda Salte, who is uh, a geologist by background. She's the managing director in, in Norway, and uh, she's managing the technical work and all the, tech, the technical team in Stavanger. Uh, also with me is Nick, who many of you have uh, heard presenting before. He's our corporate development director. I will uh, introduce uh, quickly, and then I'll come back at the end and um, say a little bit about the next couple of wells. And then uh, Hilda and, and Nick will talk about Kveitje. Um, before, we, before we get on to um, Kveitje, uh, sorry about the difficult word. Um, the um, uh, just a little reminder of the um, the uh, wh who we are. You know, Longboat is an EMP company. It's a new EMP company uh, focused on the North Sea. We are uh, our, our strategy is to build full cycle EMP. So we will be a producer, developer, and explorer. We started off last year in earnest with with a deal that involved three deals really with with farmings and we built a uh, seven well exploration program in Norway which uh, started right away uh, the deals were with Equinor and and Spirit and Idemitsu uh, we had hand-picked wells with a, a really quality exploration team that we have in Longboat seven wells five have, has been drilled so far and we made three discoveries. Uh, the Egyptian vulture, uh, in, uh, which we announced in December, and Red Hat at uh, the same time almost. Uh, and Red Hat is in the Barents Sea. We'll be part of a uh, development up there. Uh, and then Egyptian vulture is uh, large, exciting, with big potential, which needs uh, an appraisal. And we are, have, have indicated an appraisal well decision in uh, pre-summer. The, the comp we started off in Norway as an explorer, uh, and you see this, the chart there. No Norway is a very active uh, exploration uh, industry, something like 40 wells drilled last year, 20 discoveries, and now we have all part of those discoveries. Norway also a really good place to build a company because of the ESG opportunity, the, the, the opportunity to be a, a strong ESG performer as an EMP player. You see that uh, uh, emissions are low, uh, record low, uh, and, and always like in the world, world class as in, in, in that sense. So all of that uh, is continuing, and uh, we will now get to what you all uh, are, list, are, are kind of interested to hear about, Kveitje. Well, so I'll, I'll move, I'll hand over to uh, Hilda. Yeah, thank you, Helge, and uh, good morning, uh, ladies and gentlemen. I am very pleased to introduce you to this excellent uh, discovery that the Longboat and its partners had done in the Norwegian uh, continental shelf. Uh, Kveitje Main, the, the, the main reservoir that we have found, contains recoverable resources in the range between 28 and 48 million barrels. It has probably the best address on the shelf. It's surrounded by Equinor operated um, um, infrastructure, uh, fields with capacity. Uh, Equinor and its other partners has also in the recent year the, did numerous discoveries in this area, Topander being the most recent, but also Revano and Swisha and, and Grospik, all sitting there, good quality, ready to be developed. So um, Longboat is very happy to have done a, a good, very good uh, uh, discovery in this, this area. 
So what did we find? We actually encountered hydrocarbons at four levels. And the volume range that you have seen from the press release are covering equation main only. Um, we have found excellent reservoir quality. We have a reservoir porosities in the range of 30%, which is fantastic. This is an injectite play, uh, very well defined. And uh, this, uh, this is going to be very exciting going forward. As you can see from the uh, data acquisition, we had very good data collected over the main reservoir. Uh, further down in the well, we had some um, operational concerns, so the data acquisition here is more limited. But as you can see, we have a potential both in, in the Kvasia Hordaland at the top here, where we found gas, the Kvasia main, and then two deeper level, uh, Rocke and, and Roll. Uh, the thickness of Kvasia main is 24 meters, and uh, the oil type is uh, medium with an API of 30 to 40 degrees. So looking at the map, map of our uh, their discovery, as you can see, it's well defined. This is covering the, the main structure only. And you can see it's, it's nicely defined. It's also the same on the seismic. Uh, if you look at the cross sections in the corner, uh, in the lower left corner, you can see that at the upper level, we found gas. That's the red with very good properties. And then the equation main is the green. And then we have connection with the regional aquifer further down in the sands. This means that we have a good pressure support most, like, support, most likely, both from the top gas expansion. But this could also contribute to additional volumes. And then again, we have a, a contact with the regional aquifer. So we can get pressure support from that. And what's kind of special with the injectiles is that you have, they're well defined on the seismic, some of them, but you have upsides in um, sands that you can't see on the seismic. And these can indirectly contribute with volumes to our and energy to our discovery. Uh, and as uh, you saw on the kind of uh, uh, cross section earlier on, uh, we have found four levels. And the volumes that we have been mentioning, as I said again, is only covering Kvasia main. But we have upsides, both volume wise and for pressure support, in the Kvasia Hordaland gas discovery. And further down, we actually found um, oil again at this rock interval, which is uh, the Paleocene which in a neighboring well, sitting very close, as you can see from this cartoon, uh, they had the two meter oil sand with a kick in it. And then uh, towards the bottom of the well, we have penetrated uh, stringers with hydrocarbons. And it's uh, too early to say uh, anything about the volume extent of these ones, but of course this uh, provides op opportunities and upside for the future development. Okay, we'll hand over to Nick. Uh, thanks, thanks Hilda. Good morning, everyone. Uh, I am Nick Ingrassia. I am the Corporate Development Director here at Longboat. Uh, just to a few minutes on the sort of development opportunities and I guess the more general commercialization opportunities that we're seeing uh, around Kvaisha. Um, so, uh, as Hilda just went through, a uh, very exciting, uh, uh, significant discovery uh, for us. Uh, the reservoirs are relatively well understood, so we think that there's really limited need for uh, an appraisal. Uh, as you can see, there have been a number of discoveries in the area, and really most of them have been made in the past few years, uh, as Equinor has sought to prove up enough volumes for an area-wide development. Uh, and in fact, they've been very successful in doing that. And they've also been doing some transacting around there as well, which I'll come on to in a moment. Uh, in order to, and actually they found so much volume that it's likely to be two different area developments uh, uh, utilizing uh, spare capacity that they have both at uh, Troll B uh, and at Troll C, uh, both of which Equinor operates. So in total, you know, there's about two to 300 million barrels uh, to be developed in the area, which is quite a significant volume. Um, and, and what we expect to see is, is quite a bit of shared infrastructure costs, giving us kind of good economies uh, of scale in, in the area. So we think these are going to be very commercial uh, and uh, very high value barrels. And I think that that's really quite important here. Just looking at the sort of overall uh, commercial situation in the area, uh, uh, you know, these... <clears throat> 
you can see that there are quite a few different parties around here uh, who are active in the area, but there are some common themes. Uh, we see Equinor being uh, very big in the area uh, and they operate most of these discoveries. Uh, we also see uh, a number of uh, uh, private companies in, in and around the area, which have been really pushing forward some of this exploration. Uh, and we also see Patoro, which is the state uh, defined interest, uh, also having a very uh, strong uh, position in, in most licenses, albeit they are not in the Kavaisha discovery itself. Uh, a number of these parties are, are active in, in Troll C. So, so usually what we find uh, is that when you have an alignment uh, between the operator and the parties and the infrastructure, uh, you see uh, really good uh, economics, but you also see a huge drive to develop this stuff. But what we would expect in this area is to see a reducement in, in the sort of a number of parties uh, in the area to get to ensure that there's an alignment uh, be, between the infrastructure and, and the sort of area owners. Uh, and we've seen that be a, a driver for transactions in the past few years in Norway. We've listed a couple here, uh, some of them being kind of just straight swap, uh, development swaps for developments in, in other areas. Uh, but there have also been instances of uh, uh, swaps between developments and production and also a little bit of cash. Uh, AcroBP announced a, a transaction with Pignig, which is a Polish uh, company uh, uh, several years ago, uh, which included uh, some cash and a swap for developments in the SCARV area and also included uh, a proportion of uh, uh, Gina Krog, which is a producing field in the NCS. And so, you know, we are very open to uh, uh, to all sorts of options here around how we might uh, uh, realize the full value from the Kavaisha discovery, uh, whether it means uh, selling, whether it means swapping, or whether it also means taking this through to development uh, as part of an exciting overall area-wide uh, uh, program being executed by uh, as uh, by, by uh, Equinor. Uh, and we think that um, the key will be trying to make sure that, that we, we, we take our time, we make sure we get the full value, and we understand uh, that, that we're not leaving any of the upside on the table. Okay, back Thanks to you, Helga. Nick. Thanks, Nick. Yeah, so just to uh, finalize um, the um, so the, uh, the deep sea Bergen, which is the big deep sea Stavanger drilling rig, uh, uh, is uh, so in the next few days expected will be finishing the work on Kvecha. And uh, then that rig will move uh, just across a very short distance over to Cambozola. And in Cambozola, we have 25%, and it's a very large gas prospect. So, very, very exciting well uh, coming up next. Um, the um, this is one that uh, is on Wells to watch list of, of Woodmac, the uh, oil and gas consultancy by Petoro, the state company. So it's it's being watched and uh, it's it's a test. It's it's a it's a test of a new play uh, which has occurred from uh, very high spec new uh, long offset seismic where suddenly you can see these geological features, the the, the fans and the and the channels and it also has what is called gas chimneys which are a gas that is kind of shown on the seismic that it leaks up so so there are a lot of good uh, good indications that that makes this prospect uh, very very exciting uh, and the size makes it also exciting and the fact that it is uh, close to uh, so much infrastructure so many possible routes for exporting gas from this area um, that well uh, will take some time. It's an HPHT well, so it will take some time to drill, probably uh, coming uh, results expected in the kind of end of May or early June. Uh, then uh, we have uh, the last well in this drilling campaign. Uh, it's uh, Copernicus, which is further north, but still within the uh, uh, tieback distance to the Norwegian pipeline system. And that will um, spud in uh, July is the current expectation. Uh, so uh, that should then have results August, September. Uh, also, again, a very large prospect. This one has a, what's called a DHI, means the seismic uh, is, gives a, a, some strong indicators of uh, presence of hydrocarbons. Um, so um, two exciting wells. And then in parallel, we um, we keep uh, working uh, opportunities in the M&A market. Um, so I think with that, um, uh, we'll, that's that's kind of what we plan to present to you today. And uh, we have um, uh, some Q&A. 
that that's perfect. Thank you very much for your presentation. Ladies and gentlemen, please do continue to submit your questions using the Q&A tab situated in the top right hand corner of your screen. But just while I come and take a few moments to review those questions submitted today, I'd like to remind you that a recording of this presentation, along with a copy of the slides and the published Q&A, can be accessed via your investor dashboard. As you can see, we've received a number of questions throughout today's presentation, and thank you to all investors for submitting their questions. Please could ask that you read out the question and give a response where it's appropriate to do so, and I'll pick up from you at the end. Thank you. Uh, so um, let's let's look at the question. So first one uh, uh, is as follows. Hopefully, exciting times ahead. However, I bought into longboard energy. Why do you keep referring to Faro? Surely that is in the past. Is that why Longboard have been too cautious in completing deals since the listing of Longboard? Times have changed and so has the market. Comments, please. Um, so the two, two questions here, I think, uh, referring to Faro, probably uh, something we do less and less. I think there's kind of, it's only mentioned us where, where we all came from in his last press release. So point taken, I think uh, Faro, Faro is, uh, goes, goes into the history books. That's, that's uh, true. Uh, then I think the other more serious question is uh, uh, suggesting Farrell was uh, maybe slow and prudent at, at, at making deals and uh, is Longboat the same? Uh, I think Farrell did some fantastic deals, actually, some really transformational deals uh, during uh, its time. Um, and uh, uh, with Longboat, uh, we're also very focused on deals being good. So we don't do a deal for, uh, for just to do a deal. We, we, we are all shareholders and we like deals to be value accretive to shareholders. So very focused on value and quality. And uh, we do screen a huge amount of opportunity. We keep screening a huge amount. And these last couple of years have been in a market where uh, prices have been extremely volatile. A lot of movements. I know these are excuses and we shouldn't excuse, but the truth is there aren't any deals that we consider regrets. So, uh, but going forward, uh, I'm very optimistic. I think we're all very optimistic that uh, there are some really good opportunities uh, out there now and, uh, uh, and, and we keep working them. Um, second, the next question. You said in the discovery RNS, we believe that this is an asset that can be commercialized via either development or transac transactions. At the moment, which of these two routes do you think Longboat is most likely to pursue? Um, maybe, uh, Nick, I think you, 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 you touched on it. Maybe you could uh, answer that one. Uh, do you know what? Uh, I think what we've found uh, over time and what I've found personally is that keeping all of your options open for the sort of longest period of time tends to uh, uh, create the most value. Uh, because if anyone ever sees you being boxed into one corner or another, then you're negotiating uh, a potential kind of decreases quite significantly. Uh, so I wouldn't want to comment on which is the most likely. And what we're going to do is we'll pursue all, all that's open to us, which is why we're looking at working on uh, debt facilities that would sort of potentially fund uh, the the capital elements of uh, of a discovery like this, but also looking at you know how could we sell this, how could we swap it, could we add to this position to make it more material. So I think we're really trying to keep all options open. Thanks, Nick. Next question with regards to the Rocca and Enrol prospects. You note the three meter of sand with hydrocarbons at Rocca and Stringers at Enrol in this well. How does that compare with the seismic prognosis? What were you expecting, hoping for? Uh, Hilde, is that something you could? Yeah, I can try and I will attempt to answer that. So for the license and for, for Longboat, uh, Creation Main was always the target we went for. And the other ones here are upside potential, as I said. It's very unfortunate that we had operational concerns towards the lower part of the well. So we don't have sufficient data to really say much about that interval. Uh, the whole on the top, uh, there we have penetrated the uh, three to four meter gas interval. And that is probably going to either contribute to the development as a pressure support or could be also direct uh, input to the well, to the wells. Thanks, Hilda. Um, 
Then we have another one. You mentioned the possibility of trading Croatia as the, as the resource estimates are quite a large range, 28 to 48. Does that make it harder to get full value uh, at, um, before appraisal? Um, that, that's a good question, actually. But I think the industry is very used to these wide ranges. Uh, it, you know, even, I mean, almost all oil and gas assets have, have big reserves and certainties and so it is not um, it, it's not a blocker I would say for uh, transacting but if you look at the data and the understanding uh, Kveche is uh, different from Egyptian vulture so Kveche is much more in the category that it can be traded because everyone would recognize and understand and accept the, uh, the numbers in the case of Egyptian vulture it, it, it is. Uh, it, it probably needs an appraisal. It can also be traded, but it, it, there is a bigger need for um, for that appraisal to happen before uh, it can be traded at good value. I would say. If I can add to that as well, uh, from a pure technical point of view, that is actually a very narrow range for discovery. Uh, so it's it is well defined. Uh, and um, so it's more the kind of upside, which is not reflected in the range that uh, needs to be looked further into. Uh, thanks, Hilda. Thanks, Hilda. Um, then I think it's a couple of questions that we uh, let's um, let's move to one here. Could could you quantify the upside associated with the upper gas at Kveja? What would need what what would need to be done to de-risk this upside? Um, again, maybe Hilda, your best place to answer that yeah as i said there is kind of two components to the upper stand it could be uh, indirectly as pressure support or it could be a direct production uh, at the moment uh, we need to go back to our seismic and calibrate in uh, in the thicknesses here and uh, before we can say something about the resource potential for this sand yeah um how does the operator feel about Rocca Enroll? What does the operator think about next steps for these deep horizons? Is that something you could comment on, Hilda? Or... Yeah, I think we, the whole partnership is uh, excited over the, that we have found hydrocarbons at four levels. Um, we need to, again, calibrate the seismic. Uh, I guess the deeper targets are with the stringers, uh, are maybe. Uh, less optimistic, the, the, um, the three meter of Rocke, you already have a kick in a neighboring well that you can, you can kind of map on the seismic. Uh, but it's again very unfortunate about those operational concerns because we have not acquired the necessary data there to give a volume estimate. Thanks, Hilda. Uh, question I think you can answer, Nick, is. Um... Are you looking at any other exploration targets for 2023? So, yeah, and I can see there's a, a kind of a few questions about M and A just in general. Um, we remain very actively looking at uh, a whole range of uh, potential ways to grow the business. Um, we've always stated that, uh, you know, inorganic growth, so so kind of transacting is, is one of the key legs to the story in the business. Uh, and we will and are continuing to look at a whole bunch of uh, transactions uh, across the spectrum, you know, be they sort of production, development, uh, exploration. Uh, we are keen to add to the um, to the portfolio. Uh, I would say, echoing what Helga said, uh, we've seen that the recent volatility has uh, ironically delayed quite a bit of transacting. There have been certain transactions that have been pulled uh, because of an inability to sort of match buyer and seller expectations, uh, especially with that near term volatility in, in prices. But we remain confident that uh, we'll be able to add to the portfolio this year. Uh, and, and obviously, you know, we're, we're kind of getting on through the year. So, so looking towards 23 and, and how we can bulk up the program uh, is certainly on the agenda. Thanks, thank you. And then we have a question here about the UK. In January, highlighting the uncertainty caused by the combo controversy in the UK, you stated that we're worried about recent political comments, a process in the UK related to new oil and gas development created uncertainty, unnecessary uncertainty. Three months later, how, do you, how are you feeling about these issues? And I think um, uh, we can answer there that we feel that kind of the last half year, uh, 
the sentiment uh, in the market towards oil and gas just generally has improved hugely. Uh, that's something we have uh, also feedback from uh, you who are the shareholders. So um, it, it, it's, uh, I think the world has woken up to a couple of facts, you know, that it's not, ESG is still very important, but it's not the only thing in the world. You know, there's also uh, energy security, uh, where Norway and the UK are, ca can be uh, very important. There is gas as a transition fuel, which is also uh, really valuable. And I think uh, we've seen also uh, recently in the UK that uh, uh, politicians in the UK are, are seeing that same picture as we all see. Uh, so I think that uh, we, we, uh, we are positive. We, we, we continue to be keen on, on building the business in Norway and the UK. Uh, slight challenge is that, like I say, while Norway used drill 40 exploration wells and develop, uh, and develop, uh, develop a large number of fields, UK, uh, uh, you know, I don't know how, it's very, very slim uh, exploration activity. Uh, production still big and production deals uh, are, are available in the UK and we're screening them as we do in Norway. Uh, production deals are hard to, to do and, and, and with, with big upsides, which we always look at, but uh, we continue to chase uh, and, and um, the, the strategy is unchanged and, and we're positive towards the UK and more positive than we were uh, three months ago. Um, then uh, I think we take a last question, um, trying to get an idea on the value of the recent discovery. It looks like you have a minimum of 3 million BOE net to longboat. Is this 2P or 2C? How much do you, how much do you discover barrels sell for in this part of the world? Uh, is it on 2C or 2P? Is it $2 or $5 or $10? I think uh, Nick, uh, this is probably one for you. <laughs> I get all the easy ones, huh? Thank you. Um, <laughs> look, I, I, I'm not going to sort of sit and tell you everyone gets to make up their own mind about what uh, things are worth. And I would also point out that things are worth different things to different amounts of different people. Uh, so immediately after something is discovered, it's probably more of a 2C barrel than a 2P barrel. Uh, but I think in this area, as we've discussed, uh, because it will be developed quite rapidly, there's a route to market, and uh, we know that Equinor is working quite hard on an, an area development. Uh, I think that this will very rapidly become 2P. Um, I, I, we've given a list there of recent uh, uh, discovered resource transactions uh, on the Norwegian continental shelf on page nine of this presentation. I think it also appeared in a, in a historic presentation of ours uh, related to the original transaction. Um, and so you're welcome to kind of look through that and, and, and look at some of the values. Uh, I would point out that some of those uh, are uh, in, in different parts uh, of the Norwegian continental shelf. And so some of those are in areas with less infrastructure. Uh, a, a couple of the deals on Duva and Nova, uh, these are, you can actually see on that map there where Nova is. Uh, up just above Grosbeek, uh, so so those are kind of more uh, uh, more relevant transactions for something like a, a Kavisha, uh, just because of where the area is and and where the the infrastructure is. Thank you, and I, I think we end there because uh, and there are some more questions, but they're very uh, very overlapping with uh, with questions and, and issues we already um, already discussed. So um, thanks a lot, everyone, and back to um, thank. That's perfect. I think you've addressed all those questions you can from investors today. And of course, the company will review all questions submitted today and will publish those responses on the Investor Me company platform. But just before redirecting investors to provide you with their feedback, which I know is particularly important to the company, could I please ask for a few closing comments? Uh, yeah, closing comment would be that uh, we, we are so excited about this, so happy. I mean, it, it's been a great, uh, been a great well result and uh, gives us more options and uh, very excited about uh, kind of the next uh, next half year and, and, and uh, what can happen. So uh, looking forward to that. Thank you, everyone. Thank you to all for updating investors today. Can I please ask investors not to close this session? As you now be automatically redirected to provide your feedback in order that the management team can better understand your views and expectations. It's going to take a few minutes to complete, but I'm sure it'll be greatly valued by the company. On behalf of the management team at Longboat Energy PLC, we'd like to thank you for attending today's presentation. And good morning to you all. Bye.